So now all we have to do is we have to go into fog shader and we have to adjust this so that, well, it has all the proper data and such. So I'm going to start by having a private static final int called max point lights. And I'm going to set it equal to 4, just like the shader. If you wanted to be clever, you could make this a non-constant variable and try parsing it in from your shaders. And in fact, as shaders get more complicated, I'm probably going to implement a system that makes doing that type of thing a little bit easier. But for now, this is perfectly fine. J just to keep these two variables in sync. Well, this one variable in sync, really. So yeah. Now, I'm going to have a pr private static point light, if I can type, point light array, called point lights. It's going to equal a new point light array. And I'm just not going to have anything in it by default. And all I'm going to do is, well, nothing yet. But I am going to have a method called public static void set point lights. And actually, that reminds me, did I? Okay. I want to make sure I made that stat. So public static void set point light takes in point lights. Wait, what? <laughs> point light array called, I'll just call it point lights. Well, yeah. So, first off, if point lights dot length is greater than max point light, so if we are array is too big, our shader can't handle it, then we're gonna have a problem. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to system dot error dot print ln error hmm, error you passed in too many point lights. Max allowed is plus max point lights plus comma. You passed in point lights dot length. There we go. Excellent. Nice descriptive error message. So it tells them what they did wrong and how they did it wrong. Excellent. So, with that, I'm going to just generate a new exception dot print stack trace just as a hack so that I can give them a tree and then system dot exit one because I don't want them to continue executing with invalid point lights. However, if that if they did pass some proper things, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this dot point lights equals point lights. Oh, all right. Fong shader dot point lights equals point lights. And what this is going to do, well, obviously it's just going to assign it to this array. So that gives us nice access to all the point lights. Now we can give point lights to our fong shader, but our fong shader still isn't actually using them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a for loop. For and i equals zero. i is less than max point lights. I plus plus. And what this is going to do is this is going to be used to actually initialize our what, what's it called? Our array of point lights. I was trying to look for it in Java code, but it's in the GLSL code. To initialize all of these uniforms in this one uniform line. Because, well, we have to initialize every thing in there, every little tiny infinitesimal detail. So, this is going to work with add uniform going to say point lights sub plus whatever iteration we're on dot base dot color. That's my first one. And we're going to have to set the base up properly if I... Oh, right. Plus that. There we go. And three... How many do we need? Four, five, six, seven, I think. I think. No, that doesn't seem right. Okay. Whatever. I'll just start with this and we'll see what happens. So dot base dot intensity. Now that everything in base, now I need attenuation, so attend dot constant. And there's three more attenuations, so ten dot linear and a ten dot exponent. So with that, that just leaves the point light dot position. 
And there you go. That should initialize every single point light uniform. Should. Now, final thing. All I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have some method set uniform point. Yes, point lights to point lights. Well, actually, hmm. Now, what I'm going to do here for die equals zero, i is less than point lights dot length. And then, oh yeah, i plus plus. And for that, I'm going to set every individual uniform point lights sub plus i plus. There we come on, type the plus sign. There you go. And I'm going to set that to point lights sub i. And with that, that should just leave me to implement this method. So just need set uniform for point lights. So public void set uniform string uniform name point light point light. Well, not with comma, but you get the idea. And there. So now I just need to say, how do I set a uniform for a point light? And this is pretty straightforward. Set uniform for essentially every everything. So I already have something for base light, so I can just do that directly. So uniform name plus dot base is point light dot get base. And there's get okay, maybe it's get base light. There we go. Now set uniform. We're gonna have to set the attenuation. That's gonna be a little trickier. I could write a unique method for it, but since I'm not gonna be really reusing this, I'm just gonna do straight up. So dot attend dot constant to point light dot get attenuation. Wait, dot get a ten dot get constant. No dot get constant. There we go. And you're not resolving properly? Ah, set uniform F. There we go. One just need three of these. One for constant, one for linear, and one for exponent. And now I just need get linear and get exponent. And there you go. That should set all the attenuation. Which just leaves one final set uniform method. Uniform name plus dot position. And this is gonna set to point light dot get position. And there you go. With all that done, that should be everything that we need to actually use this in the game class. So, in our game class, let's go ahead and go down here and start adding some point lights. So I'm gonna try adding in two point lights. So I'm gonna have a point light called, I'll just call it P light one. And I'm gonna have a point light I'm gonna call P light two. And point light one is going to equal a new point light, which takes in a new base light, which takes in a new vector three F. And I'm gonna have this shine red light, so zero. And with an intensity of 0.8f, yeah. Next parameter should take in a new attenuation. And what should I make the attenuation? Well, it's going to have to be some value, so I'm going to have a constant value of 1, a linear value of. Actually, let's just do the physically, uh, the physically accurate equation. So zero, zero, 1. And finally, a new vector 3f, 0, well, I'll say negative 2 on x, 0 on y, and 5 in f. Mm, and 3 in f, there we go. That way it's going to be sort of to the left of our mesh, and a little bit in front. So that should initialize one point light. And it's not used, that's fine. For number two, I'm just going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to change it to blue. And I'm going to make it positive two and seven. And not double semicolon. And with all that, all I should have to do now is do something like 
foam shader dot set point lights to a new point light array of P light new point light array of P light one and P light two. And with all that done, this should actually run. So are you ready? Are you ready for the epic hitting of the start button? So actually let's disable the directional light just for dramatic effect, and let's run. Epic crash. So, let's start debugging. Fong fragment, line 92, undeclared identify. Here, attenuation, because I misspelled it, because I'm a genius. Take two. It's actually working. I, I'm amazed that it's working right off the bat at all, but hey, there you go. We got actual point lights. And well, that's actually kind of a trippy disco effect with <laughs> the way the specular reflection's working, but yeah. Actually, I'm going to try moving them a little bit closer to my mesh. So this should be pretty much directly to the left. The red one should. So it should be a little stronger now. Yeah, there you go. A little bit stronger. And that's still not quite showing it off as much as I'd like. So, one moment. I'm going to try setting something up to really show off the point light effect. Because right now it's just it's just like, like, just like before. There's no distinct difference. One moment. Alright, so I went ahead and I came up with something that I think really shows off our new point light system. So I'm going to walk you through the changes, but I'm not going to code them out in front of you. If you want to have the same code I do, you can pause and you can copy. But again, this example code is not important to the engine. Anyways, here's what I did. First off, I moved the p light 1 and p light 2 variables up to the top here. That way, I can access it in other places than the constructor. So there you go. Got those. And I did change the green component to 0.5. Those are the only two changes there. In our material, I changed our specular to be a little bit less ridiculous. I changed it to a intensity of 1 and an exponent of 8 rather than 2 and 32. So there you go. I did create a completely new mesh. And it's just a square based on these variables. So here it is. Here's the code. If you want to copy it, pause. But there you go. And these are new indices. And yeah, so I still have the old code in comments, but here's the code I'm actually using for this example. And in our update method, I got rid of rotation because it didn't do well with a rotating plane, so yeah. I also moved our plane down one pix or one unit. And yeah. Now, the point light position. I'm setting the position based on sine and cosine of temp. So, yeah. And if you want that code, you can pause. The thing I would like to point out is this is exactly one unit away because I'm putting these at the height of zero and this at negative one. If you want some really interesting effects, assuming you're using the physically accurate attenuation, try put it modulating this. Try making it go really close to the plane. I think you'll find it... it it's a really interesting effect because the light just gets really, really intense when your light's like right infinitesimally neck close to your plane. But yeah. Anyways, enough talk. On to the demonstration. So if I run, hey, we get a nice little plane. And if controls, there you go. <laughs> Hitting the wrong buttons. Yeah, you see, we have our point lights moving across the plane. You notice the dark squares aren't reflecting blue that well. So interesting effect there. And yeah, so interesting trippy disco effect, but I like it. I think it looks awesome. So yeah, there you go. Just a basic demonstration. And again, feel free to play around with this all you want. You can get some really interesting effects if you play around with this a bit. But yeah, that's just about all I wanted to say for this video. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and have fun with your point lights. See you next time.